After perhaps the strangest day of Overwatch League ever, I'm here to review day one of the second week of the 2019 season. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you didn't manage to get through the first game yesterday, let alone all four, but somehow I managed to do it. So armed with what I saw, let's get right into this review of the day's strange affairs. The first match of the day brought together the Washington Justice and the London Spitfire in a game that after week one looked like it might be a very competitive contest. And competitive it was, sort of. Throughout the whole series, the general level of team fighting was very poor and often took a long time before either side engaged onto one another. And the first map, Busan, illustrated this perfectly. Washington's 3-3 composition had its occasional highlights, but most of the time took forever to take any engagements, instead just trading poke damage. London, meanwhile, struggled to take advantage of a triple DPS composition, before repeating their 3-3 comp struggles from the week before. The deciding team fight at the end of the map seemed to go on for an eternity as the two teams trade as ultimates for such a long period of time without anyone dying. Both Zarya's and Zenyatta's charged second ultimates before the Justice came out on top. Despite also losing the second map on Nimbani, the substitution by London to switch Birdring out for Guard changed the whole dynamic of the series. With Guard playing Sombra and Brigitte and Prophet moving over to the Zarya role, London felt a lot more comfortable with this lineup, with Prophet really highlighting the difference in his Zarya play between him and Birdring. In the end, this strange series came to an end with a reverse sweep victory, 3-2, of a London Spitfire, as the Washington Justice struggled in the later maps with some increased aggression from London. Moving on to the second game of day one, which many including myself wrote off as being an easy victory for the Philadelphia Fusion against the Florida Mayhem. The big news pre-game, however, was what stood out in the rest of the series. Boombox was unable to play with illness, and he was replaced by Elk, who was forced to play on the flex support role, rather than his preferred main support role. The quality of gameplay was noticeably better than the previous London-Washington game, but the main storyline was the major improvements that Florida made to their 3-3 gameplay after their squash last week to Atlanta. Swan and BQB made strong, aggressive engagements that often caught Sado out of position. And the other major storyline was the extent to which Hagopen outplayed Elk, who both in his mechanics and alt usage looked uncomfortable on Zenyatta. Carpe was once again the standout for the fusion, but without Boombox, he could only carry his team to one map win and a draw, as the mayhem shocked the league with a 2-1 victory of a table-topping fusion. This strange day continued into Game 3, and the intriguing match between the rather unknown Guangzhou Charge and a Dallas Fuel side that was reinvigorated following their convincing win against the Dynasty last week. Despite that, the main questions facing this matchup were whether Dallas would be able to deal with the Sombra play from the Charge, and which Jekyll and Hyde persona they would adopt. We soon received our answer as Dallas returned to their terrible form that they showed us against the Shock last week. Both the triple DBS and the 3-3 compositions from Guangzhou look superior to Dallas's throughout the series. In particular, Rio on main tank and Happy on Zarya stood out as the star performers as they made quick work of the fuel to pick up their first win of the season in surprising fashion, 4-0. This result also now means the Dragons in their second season, are now the only Chinese Overwatch League side to have not yet won a game. To round off the first day of Week 2 came the surprisingly entertaining series between the Seoul Dynasty and the Chengdu Hunters. Seoul picked up the series 4-0, but the scoreline really doesn't do justice to the Hunters' performance. Chengdu don't care what the meta is supposed to be, with them feeling very comfortable running the Hammond, whether in a pseudo 3-3 comp with a triple DPS comp, and Ameng once again had a strong game. Jinmu also had a standout game, especially on Farah against the Dynasty's 3-3 composition, 
and if not for three separate C9s by the Hunters over the course of a series, it wouldn't have surprised me if they picked up one or two maps here. Seoul didn't look at their best, but Michelle played a really good game in which he was given the freedom to be flexible, unlike in the loss to Dallas. The standout highlight of the series, however, was on the horizon, where Sol ran Fletter on Symmetra into a Hunter's composition on defence, but not only featured Torb, but also Bastion. Fletter showed off an incredible amount of damage the Sim can do at high charge, but it was actually the Torb and Bastion combination that was winning the teamfight, until the Hunters C9 the point in what had been engagement they were looking like winning. Whilst I got two of the results correct in my predictions, I think my assumed scorelines will tell you that at least for me, most of these games, with the exception of the last, did not turn out how I or many others expected. Day 2, on the other hand, should run a bit more expectedly, but with some great matchups, as the Atlanta Reign play the Toronto Defiant, the NYXL go up against the LA Valiant, the Shanghai Dragons once again attempt to break the streak against the Boston Uprising, and the Houston Outlaws look to shoot down the high-flying Hangzhou Spark. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'll link my week 2 preview and predictions video in the description below if you missed them, and please like and subscribe for more Overwatch League content moving forward.